Ladies and gentlemen, today we embark on a journey to dissect one of the most renowned yet controversial names in the gaming industry, Rockstar Games. Is it the greed, the deception, or perhaps the corporate corruption that has tainted the once pristine reputation of this developer? Whether we link it to their parent company, Take-Two Interactive, led by the enigmatic Strauss Zelnick, or if there's more to the story, it's high time we unravel the reasons behind the discontent that some of us gave Gamers feel. Join me as we delve into the world of Rockstar Games, where success and controversy often walk hand in hand. Let's begin with something that's been bugging us for quite some time. The disappearance of those incredible story-driven DLCs that once enriched our favorite games. Remember the golden era of GTA 4, The Ballad of Gay Tony, or Undead Nightmare for Red Dead Redemption? Those were the days, right? But now, fast forward to GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, where are those enriching DLCs? The answer is as frustratingly simple as it is obvious. GTA Online has been raking in the dough, and Rockstar is too busy rolling out updates to even think about us single-player DLC fans. In an interview with Game Informer, Rockstar's design director, Imran Sarwar, mentioned that GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 felt complete. But honestly, it feels like they just didn't care about the fans who craved a continuation. We've been left hanging since 2013 after GTA 5 and 2018 after RDR2's release. The question is, do you think Rockstar should have given us those beloved DLCs, or are they right to focus on GTA Online while killing off Red Dead Online? We have been pondering a lot over Rockstar's recent remasters, or should I say lackluster attempts at reviving the classics. Now, don't get me wrong, we're living in an era where timeless gems like GTA San Andreas, Red Dead Redemption, and LA Noir still shine like diamonds, drawing in new generations. Each pixel, every polygon, and all those nostalgic audio elements blend seamlessly to transport us to those unforgettable worlds. But here's the thing, Rockstar's remasters have been, well, a bit underwhelming. While Mafia Definitive Edition set the bar high, some of Rockstar's attempts have fallen painfully short. Remember the GTA Trilogy remaster fiasco? Technical issues, graphical downgrades, the removal of beloved features, and don't even get me started on those washed out character designs. It felt like they rushed it out the door without a second thought. And what's worse, they refused to show any gameplay footage. Critics didn't get an early review copy, and when they finally apologized, it felt like they were throwing their developers under the bus. It's a trend we've seen in modern day gaming, and it's one that needs to stop. Remember Cyberpunk 2077? At least CDPR owned up to it, and that's why they made a huge comeback, something which we talked about in our previous video. So, what do you think? Is it time for Rockstar to step up their remaster game, or should they leave the classics alone? Can we just take a moment to talk about the elephant in the room? Game launchers! Remember the good old days when you could just fire up a game and dive straight into the action? Well, those days are long gone, my friends. Now we're stuck dealing with these pesky game launchers. I mean, seriously, Rockstar Games Launcher, what's up with that? It's supposed to make our lives easier, but it's practically mandatory for all their games. It's like they're forcing us into a digital straitjacket, and don't even get me started on the integration issues. Multiplayer modes, online components, and all that jazz. It's supposed to enhance our gaming experience, but it's just causing chaos. We're talking launcher failures, offline mode mishaps, server meltdowns, you name it. But the real kicker here is when they mess with single player games. I mean, come on! Single player should be an escape from the madness, right? Yet they're pushing online connectivity into every nook and cranny. It's time for a serious debate, folks. Should game launchers stay, or should we kick them to the curb? What do you think? Strap yourselves in, because point four is gonna make your blood boil. We've already vented our frustrations about that half-baked GTA Trilogy remaster, and don't get me started on that Rockstar Games launcher debacle. But now, let's talk about the real gut punch. Rockstar Classics, you remember those right? GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas, the OGs of the franchise. But guess what? Rockstar, in all their wisdom, decided to yank them off the digital shelves. Can you believe it? 
They pulled those classics under the guise of console or PC architectural reasons. Or let's call it what it is, pure corporate greed. And what's the kicker? They did this right before dropping the hot mess that was the GTA Trilogy, the definitive edition. So, we're forced to buy this glitchy disaster at a hefty $60 to $70 price tag, with no way to get our hands on the classics we love. What's Rockstar playing at, huh? It's time to dig deeper into this rabbit hole, my friends. Why'd they pull a fast one on us like that? Midway through this video, and we've got some serious gamer grievances to air. So, we've all been clamoring for a taste of the good old Red Dead Redemption 1 after the epic success of RDR2, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to saddle up as John Marston again? But here's the kicker. Rockstar didn't give us the remake or remaster we were hoping for. No, instead they gave us a plain old port. A copy-paste job for the Nintendo Switch and PS4. And don't even get me started on it not being available on the PC. Now, I ask you, fellow gamers, is this how we treat classics like RDR1? They slapped a $50 price tag on it and let Double Eleven Studios, known for Fallout 76 and Rust console edition, handle the RDR port. And they had the nerve to say the PS4 is modern? It's a decade old system. Oh, and the cherry on top, the trailer for this so-called special release got absolutely ratioed on YouTube with a truckload of dislikes. So here's the burning question. If this port sells like hotcakes, are we in for a wave of 15-year-old game ports at insane prices? Brace yourselves, my friends, because Rockstar might just pull the same stunt with GTA 4. What a time to be a gamer, huh? Get ready to dive into a virtual rabbit hole with Point Six. We're talking about a maze that'll leave you scratching your head. Virtual currency, loot boxes, it's like stepping into a digital casino where the house always wins. And guess who's running the show? Yeah. It's none other than Rockstar. Remember Strauss Zelnick's comments on loot boxes? He basically said, eh, we're not against it, and it can be an appropriate game mechanic. Fast forward to the Diamond Casino in GTA Online. You start by buying shark cards with real world money to get virtual cash. Right, then you exchange that for casino chips, and boom, you're gambling your heart out. Now here's the kicker, folks. Loot boxes might be a touchy subject, but a full-blown in-game casino replicating real-life gambling is A-OK -okay for Rockstar. And let's not kid ourselves, this stuff can be addictive, especially for folks susceptible to such patterns. So why the double standard? Why can't we have some consistency here, Rockstar? Listen up, gamers, because we've got ourselves a real head-scratcher here. Tech 2, the big boss behind Rockstar Games, decided to drop a lawsuit hammer on five individuals who reverse-engineered GTA 3 and GTA Vice City on GitHub. But here's the twist. They didn't use any infringing code. In fact, they actually made these classics look and play better than ever. Now, the plot thickens. Some eagle-eyed gamers spotted the signature of the infamous pirate group Razor 1911 in the Rockstar Games executable. Not just in Max Payne 2, but also in Midnight Club 2. Rockstar tried to do some damage control by replacing the executable with the original, but left the cracked version in there under a different name. Luna. <laughs> What's the deal with Take-Two and these pirates? Why the legal battle when they improved the games? And what's with that signature showing up everywhere? Point 8. Maybe a real heartbreaker. Back in June 2012, during the development of Grand Theft Auto V, over 50 Rockstar North employees were told to show up for work the next day, even though their contracts had expired. It was a routine. Sign short contracts, get them extended at the last minute, but this time, it was different. Picture this, a department lead walks in, taps people on the shoulder one by one, and directs them to HR. BAM! About 30 contractors, many new to the industry, were shown the door. They thought they'd at least get credit for their hard work on the record-breaking GTA 5. But guess what? They were MIA from the game's credits. And that's not all, folks. It's not just GTA 5. Rockstar didn't credit developers who left before Red Dead Redemption 2 was done. How can this happen in a billion-dollar industry? Now, this is a serious one. Rockstar, 
the creator of beloved IPs, is straight up cancelling them to make way for the new kids on the block. Remember Bully 2 and 3? Yeah, they were on the horizon, but nope. Rockstar decided to pull the plug on Bully's sequel in favor of Max Payne 3 and Red Dead Redemption. And then there's this whole mystery around Agent, a game we've been waiting on for over a decade. It's been wiped off the official Rockstar Games list, social club, and even the website. What's the deal there? And let's not forget about Max Payne and Midnight Club, all-time favorites. Rockstar bought Max Payne from Remedy Entertainment, but it doesn't fit their games-as-a-service agenda. Midnight Club? Well, it's stuck in the past. And while Rockstar is still milking GTA Online and Rockstar ditching these classic IPs, they have left us clearly hanging in the wind. Now we reach the grand finale, which is point 10. And I want you to chime in on this one. Here's the million dollar question. When you buy a game, do you expect some decent post-sales support for your hard-earned cash? Well, hold on to your controllers because Rockstar's customer support ain't winning any awards. We're talking reports and actual call recordings of Rockstar's support disconnecting calls when folks are trying to recover their hacked accounts. Bot-generated responses that make you want a facepalm, it's a far cry from the Rockstar we knew a decade ago. Remember when Dan Hauser, the GTA creative genius, left in 2019? Yeah, things started going downhill. We've seen cracks in the armor, from killing off Red Dead Online to the train wreck that was GTA Trilogy The Definitive Edition. They even yanked licensed tracks, removed cars from GTA Online, and slapped a price tag on a stripped-down RDR port. But here's the kicker, gamers. They introduced a predatory GTA Online Plus subscription with locked content, and the CEO's bonus is tied to microtransactions. How do you like them apples? And don't even get me started on the RDR port's missing multiplayer with a $50 price tag, justifying it as commercially accurate. It's mind-boggling. Ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap up this roller coaster of a gaming journey, I want you to ponder this. Are Rockstar's practices really anti-consumer, or is there another side to the story? It's a debate that's been raging, and your perspective matters. We shape the industry, we demand change, and we hold developers accountable for their actions. So what's your take on Rockstar's moves? Let's keep the conversation going, because it's through dialogue and action that we can truly make a difference in the gaming world. And hey, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay in the loop.